We're just waiting for quorum, and as soon as we get quorum, we'll begin. Thank you all for being here on time. Good afternoon. Uh, welcome to the Standing Committee of the Economic Development and Regulatory Services for today, which is November 13th. This is a meeting that should have been last Tuesday, but due to the election, we were unable to meet. Uh, we have a number of items on the agenda. I'll first move the consent agenda, which is items 7 through 19. Are there any items anyone would like to pull for discussion 7 through 19? Seeing none, I will move the consent agenda. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Those items are approved. We have four, uh, five public hearings this morning. Uh, we'll start with item number one, Blarney's Pub and Grill. Ms. Roberts. Thank you, Madam Chair. Yes, item number one is from Moore, Inc., doing business as Blarney's Pub and Grill. It's located at 412 14th Avenue Southeast, and their current license is for an on-sale liquor license with Class C2 entertainment. They're requesting an upgrade to Class B. In essence, they're hoping to have entertainment that will include dancing and um, um, more availability, even with the new changes in our entertainment code that he would need to have this upgrade. So a public hearing is required for uh, this um, upgrade. We did send notices out to residents and property owners um, within 600 feet of the premises. We've received no responses. We have reviewed the application and lead license inspector Julie Casey is making a recommendation to approve it this time. Are there any questions for staff on item number one? Seeing none, we'll open the public hearing on item number one. Please come forward if you're here to speak and state your name and address for the record. Hi, I'm Mike Mulrooney, uh, Blarney Pub and Grill, 412 14th Avenue Southeast. Um, Linda said it best. I don't think I can add much more to it. Um, just to increase the entertainment value that we're offering at the uh, location right now. So thanks for having me. Thanks Thank for, for making me here, number sir. one on the list. That's great. <laughs> and, uh, you're number one. <laughs> And I appreciate the help that licensing gives on all of this. I mean, they're pleasant to work with, to say the least. Great. So. Glad to hear it. Thank you for being Thanks. here today, Mike. Thanks. Is there anyone else here to speak to this issue? P please step forward, state your name and address for the record. Hi, my name is Charles Johnson. I'm with Charles Johnson. And uh, my mother lived at 22-2110 Emerson Avenue. And she, it was a fire 2006, and she died five days later. And I'm just here uh, to find out what I need to know. Okay, so you're probably here on item number five. Okay. This is item number one. Okay. But there probably is staff here on item number five. Who is here on item number five, which is the levy for special assessments? I don't see Mr. McGreno. 
I do see Mr. Yeah. Marino. Mm -hmm. Perhaps you could chat with the young man in the back okay. while we're doing the other items. Okay. And then should you need to speak uh, after you'd have a chat with him, then you are welcome to do so. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Mr. Magrino, can you handle that? Okay. Yeah. Do you want me to present the... We're not even on number five. We're on number oh, one. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. But maybe you I could was... talk to her and work it out in the hall. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else here for item number one, <laughs> which is an on-sale liquor license with Sunday sales for Blarney's Pub and Grill? Anyone? Anyone? Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. Council Member Fletcher. Thank you, Chair Goodman, uh, and thanks for running a good business in Ward 3. Uh, I checked with the neighbors, and uh, they're all, uh, actually, everybody I talked to was glad to hear that there might be more entertainment options. So uh, thanks for that, and I'm happy to move approval. On the motion to approve, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That item is approved. Thank you for being here today. We'll move on to item number two, Ms. Roberts. Thank you, Madam Chair. Item number two is from Parkway Pizza Company. Their DBA is Parkway Pizza. They're located at 4359 Minnehaha Avenue. They're making an application for their current license of an on-sale wine and strong beer, uh, strong beer license with Class E Entertainment to expand their business to have a sidewalk cafe. The sidewalk cafe will consist of four tables, eight uh, chairs, and it's located on the public sidewalk facing 44th Street um, by the business. The um, application does require a uh, public hearing. We did res um, send notices out to property owners and residents within 300 feet of the business, and we've received no responses. The application was reviewed by Public Works and Lead License Inspector Mohammed Ishmael, and we're making a recommendation to approve it this time. Any questions for Ms. Roberts on item number two? Seeing none, is anyone here to speak? We will open the public hearing on item number two. Is there anyone here? Please step forward, state your name and address for the record. I'm gonna call on Sam Nestingen, Parkway Pizza, uh, 4359 Minnehaha. Um, I'd like it if you would approve, please. Uh, <laughs> Tell us a little bit about what you do. <laughs> we could use some more tables. Um, sometimes, these would largely actually be overflow tables, but we have a whole patio there that faces Minnehaha, and these would be on the 44th Street side. I don't know if you guys know how 44th and Minnehaha, but it hits at kind of a funny angle. Mm -hmm. um, so these would be on the south-facing side of our building. I think they'd get nice sun, and I think it'd be great. Sounds good. Thank you for being here today. Thanks for having me. Is there anyone else to speak to this issue? Anyone? Anyone? Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. Council Member Gordon. Happy to move approval of this item. Approval has been moved for item number two. Further comments or questions? Seeing none, all in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? That item is approved. We'll move on to item number three, Ms. Roberts. Thank you, Madam Chair. Item number three is from Kiki Yashamu, Inc., um, DBA Don Raul. It's located at 4953 Xerxes Avenue South. The requested license is for an on-sale wine strong beer license with Class E. The location is, was formerly a sewing and tailor shop, so this is um, a um, significant out, um, build of that property and will be the first time that a restaurant will be at that location. Um, it will be a full service restaurant. The restaurateur um, is a successful business owner, a small business owner in Minneapolis and operates Cafe Enya that's located at 4601 Grand Avenue and uh, Costa Blanca Bistro, which is at 2416 Central Avenue Northeast. Um, the business will have interior seats of uh, 30 eight seats and 32 seats outside and the business will operate 9 a.m. to 11 p.m. Sunday through Thursday 9 a.m. till midnight Friday and Saturday and the exterior um, uh, side or outdoor patio will operate until 10 p.m. and will not have um, entertainment of any sort on the um, patio. Public hearing is required for this new business and notices were sent to uh, residents and property owners within 600 feet of the premises. We've received 18 responses to the public hearing notice. Uh, there were two um, responses that were concerned. Uh, the ones in support were uh, best summarized by people that had lived in the area for 30 plus years and consider the establishment to be an enhancement to their um, neighborhood. 
but the two polos were concerned about noise on the patio and patron noise as they're leaving and parking in traffic. And as I mentioned, the outdoor um, area will not have entertainment and closes at 10. These, this application was uh, reviewed by Lead License Inspector Mohammed Ishmael, and he is making recommendation to approve at this time. Are there any questions for staff on item number three? Seeing none, we'll open the public hearing on item number three, which is an on-sale wine and strong beer license uh, for Don Ru Ruel. Mr. Ruiz, if you could answer the question, when are you going to open a restaurant in the seventh ward, I'd appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for, uh, you know, it's, this is not the first time being here, so I'm just kind of, I guess, outgoing restaurant tour in the Twin Cities. So, you know, i um, try to do my best, and it seems that I've been doing it. However, we're just trying to open a new store and, you know, do the best that I can do and give the neighborhood a new uh, new place to that they can go. Uh, You're fantastic. I mean, we know you well. Uh, everyone up here would say they'd want one of your restaurants in their ward, and I'm excited you're going to be in southwest Minneapolis. Thank you for being here today. Thank you. My pleasure. Is there anyone else to speak to this issue? Please step forward, state your name and address for the record. You are a lucky man. Hopefully you're happy about this. Hi, I'm Rob McPherson. I live uh, basically across the street from the restaurant, or pretty close, on 4936 Xerxes. We uh, want to welcome uh, Don Rawl to the neighborhood. It's very exciting for us, too, to have this, what seems to be a very promising concept in, uh, in this space that, uh, well, it used to be a nice uh, little tailor shop, but it was, uh, this will be a better use. Um, our only, uh, or my only concern, my family's only concern, is that uh, the, op the operating hours are later than we would like them to be. And I don't know if this uh, venue is the best place to uh, bring that up, but uh, mm -hmm. other um, businesses in, uh, business nodes in the area uh, close earlier than this. Uh, the only one that closes uh, at the hours that we're proposing here is Red Cow, which is in sort of the uh, big commercial area over by 50th and France. Uh, the other restaurants that I have in mind are at 50th and Penn. They close at 10 and 9. Um, let's see, Cafe Vin and Pizzeria Lola close at uh, 9 and 10 and 11. Nobody's open until midnight. Um, this is a, a neighborhood with a lot of families with kids. I'm one of them. And uh, the school uh, that we love, uh, they carry it is only a block away from the place. So a lot of families in the neighborhood go to bed at 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, and uh, we'd like to see the hours <clears throat> shorter. So I'm going to guess that they're allowed to have hours even longer than what they applied for. So why don't I check with staff and let me know what the what is permitted under the ordinance and code. Yes, Madam Chair. Through the code, they are allowed to operate until 2 a.m. in the morning. And I'm that sorry, would, could you say that again? Um, the, our, through the state code and the city ordinance, they're allowed to operate until 2 o'clock in the morning with a, an alcohol license. Okay. So they, uh, their hours that they're proposing inside is until midnight and on the outdoor patio until 10. Those are less hours than are allowed in the code. Okay. So other, just so I understand, other business owners uh, uh, in this part of Minneapolis are choosing on their own to close earlier. Right. We don't, so we don't tell them what time they have to close. Okay. We just know we can, how, under the law, can tell them what time they have to. Okay. And so they have to at 2. So Mr. Ruiz is choosing to close at 12. But he might find that there aren't enough people to come to the restaurant that he might close earlier I, than that. I understand. Um, I have two businesses like this in the ward I represent, right in the heart of a less commercial area than right, 50th right. and Xerxes. Right. And generally, they're closing in the 10 o'clock range just because there aren't enough people to come to the restaurant. Okay. Um, I think the, the latest business we have closing in our neighborhood right now is Giant uh, Washateria at 9 o'clock, so uh, it'll be different. But you, I would urge you to talk to him because he's located in a lot of little neighborhood corridors and um, he might tell you what it's like in terms of their population at a certain hour. Okay. Thank right. you for being here today. And he's right behind you. You could chat with him. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else here to speak to this issue? Anyone? Anyone? Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. Council Member Cunningham. Madam Chair, I would like to move approval of this item. Approval of item three has been moved. Are there further comments or questions? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That item is approved. You guys can chat and 
maybe you could fill them in on what you think this is going to be like. Thank you. We'll move on to then item number four. Thank you, Madam Chair. Item number four is from Bad Axe Throwing USA Inc. And just because it's fun to say it again, the DBA is Bad Axe Throwing. And so they're located at 2505 Kennedy Street Northeast. And currently they have a place of entertainment license and they would uh, like to add wine and beer to their um, offerings at that um, entertainment facility. They've been operating since 2017. Um, this will operate as a full service restaurant. Their hours of operation um, at their 56, 56 seat um, restaurant is Sunday through Thursday, 9 a.m. to 10 p.m. and uh, Friday and Saturday, 8.30 a.m. to 11 p.m. Um, this upgrade requires a public hearing. Uh, public hearing notices were sent to residents and property owners within 600 feet of the premises, and we've received one response in support. It was lead inspector Julie Casey that reviewed the application for minimum standards, and she's making a recommendation to approve. Um, thank you. Are there any questions for Ms. Roberts? I, we have a question maybe for the applicant. So is this the place where they're actually throwing axes? And then we're going to have liquor too. I'm like, super excited to hear about that. Can you come up and speak to that issue? I don't believe that question was for me. So the <laughs> license. I, mean, I know this happens in other cities, so I can't imagine we wouldn't do it. But maybe you could speak to how that works and how you do each of the operations. Yeah, let certainly. Me just, let me first open the public hearing on item number four uh, and invite you to come up and speak. If you could state your name and address for the record. Uh, thank you. Uh, my name is Philip Dolliger. I'm the location manager for Bad Axe Throwing at 2505 Kennedy Street Northeast. Okay. So can you explain how this works? Absolutely. So uh, the general concept is uh, it's something that was started about four years ago. It's where it's called um, urban axe throwing. It's an environment where you're in a controlled um, lane. You are taught by an axe throwing coach how to throw axes, and then you get to play games almost like a dartboard, but uh, maybe on a more um, energetic scale. <laughs> um, what we're hoping to do is uh, get a uh, wine and strong beer license in order to um, also include um, a few beers while you're throwing. However, uh, we are instituting a three beer limit or a three drink limit as it were and uh, because our events are um, supervised at all times we're going to be keeping strict control over those limits in order to keep people from um, perhaps straying into the dangerous. Got it. That sounds like a good plan. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. You just had to ask. I'm of sorry. Course. I had no choice. <laughs> um, are Madam there Chair, any... that is also in their business plan. So that was reviewed in their application. So. I mean, it's better than I thought. I didn't think they were actually going to have a limit. Then you'd have to have people determining who had too much to drink and who did not. Right. While they're throwing axes. Who knows in this environment? And uh, we are actually making sure to train our staff um, in advance in case something should um, go beyond what we uh, have expectations for. Everyone's going to be well trained to have a, an eye out for people that may be made uh, foolish decisions on their own beforehand. Okay. Are there any other questions for Mr. Dollinger? Okay, thank you very much thank for being so much. here today. Is there anyone else here to speak to this issue? Anyone? Anyone? Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. Councilmember Fletcher. Uh, I'm not sure that I'd be safe throwing an axe even with no drinks, but uh, <laughs> it seems like there are some people. You, you think you could teach me? All right, well, I'll take you up on that, and I'll, I'll, uh, I'll move approval, and uh, let's make this happen. <laughs> on the motion to approve, further comments or questions, seeing none, all in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? That item is approved. Thank you for being here today. Our last remaining item is item number five, which is the 2018 levy for special assessments relating to nuisance conditions and unpaid administrative enforcement fees and fines. Mr. Magrino, welcome. Good afternoon, Chair Goodman and committee members. I'm Nick Magrino from Regulatory Services. I'm here today to present the 2018 Special Assessment Levy for Unpaid Fines and Fees and Nuisance Abatement. Um, this year, the total levy was a little under 1.7 million, which was a um, significant increase from last year. Um, last year, we did have uh, some issues with our software, and so we're kind of back at about where we had been. 
though it has been trending down over the past several years as conditions across the city have um, improved since the recession. There's fewer vacant properties, less nuisance abatement going on. Um, these assessments are prepayable up until the day before Thanksgiving, and so the number will continue to tick down and we'll make adjustments uh, as needed before we send that to Hennepin County on November 30th. These will then be payable um, as part of the 2018 taxes early next year for the, the properties that they're being assessed to. Um, all the property owners were given a notice of intent to assess letter uh, that they receive in the mail. They have an opportunity to go to our administrative hearing process. Um, and then at the end of the year, we do have to adopt sort of the entire role. And so that's the purpose of this action, and I'm happy to stand for any questions. Are there any questions for Mr. Magrino on item number five? Seeing none, right. thank you very much for your report and professional way of explaining it to us. We appreciate it. Awesome. Is there anyone here? This is a public hearing on item number five. Is there anyone here to speak to this issue? Anyone? Anyone? Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing and move approval. Are there further comments or questions? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That item is approved. Seeing no further business before us, we are adjourned. We're not adjourned. Just kidding. Exactly. <laughs> Couldn't see that. Um, we're having, uh, I, I'm sorry, item number six, requirements for administrative citations ordinance. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, committee members. I'm Christina Dowling with Regulatory Services. Thank you for having me here today. I'm here to discuss amending the requirements for administrative citations. So currently our ordinance requires the individual inspector's contact information listed. So we are proposing changing this to result in less time that would impact the inspector while they're in the field. This would also alleviate any frustration that customers may have when they contact the inspector and are waiting for a return phone call, thereby waiting for a call from administrative staff. This would allow inspectors to focus on code enforcement related inquiries rather than administrative enforcement inquiries, such as people calling wanted to change a contact if they want to pay a bill or if they want to close their rental license. This would also broaden the language around contacts to allow the department to assign a designee. Um, the current ordinance is drafted in a way that prohibits us from making this change procedurally, which is why I'm here today. And then looking at when it's appropriate, the 3-in-1 agent will intake the information and send it to department staff to determine the best person to return the call. So I do want to note that we are not expecting 3 agents to answer specific questions about case-related events, rather utilize them with the script that we would provide to them, and then they would then create a Lagan case for our administrative staff to filter those calls and either push it through to the um, inspector or the staff would um, answer the phone calls on their own. A few benefits of this ordinance change is that we would continue to utilize administrative staff through the enforcement of administrative bills, and then we would further support our initiative um, of enforcement actions provided much needed time to allow inspectors in the field. In terms of granting inspectors time to focus on their field inspections, as I've mentioned, and then provide more tracking and accountability for services, this change would help eliminate the time delays customers may experience waiting for inspectors to return a call. By fielding it through three and one, the department is able to decide who and um, who would excuse me who would better assess receiving those phone calls, and then SLAs would be easily more tracked. And then, in terms of a staffing model, the department can look at if we need to make any adjustments long term. Improving customer satisfaction and understanding. If these calls are fielded through 311, 311 is able to let them know. You can expect a phone call in X days based on our SLAs. They will also be able to understand the process um, in terms of like, how do we close a rental license, what updates does the department need, and things like that. Looking at triaging and direction of phone calls, if the department identifies 311 as the contact, 311 is able to report to our department if the caller needs an interpreter so that we're better able to return the call with the services that the caller needs. Um, and then in terms of eliminating duplicate phone calls, sometimes callers uh, will contact 311 the same time they call the inspector or they may call administrative staff 
all at the same time. Thereby, three phone calls are being had about the same issue. Through one was creating a case. We may have four people calling the same person back. And then just to improve response times, we obviously want to improve customer service and make sure people are receiving the best service that they can when it comes to their administrative um, citations. I'm happy to answer any questions. Are there any questions? Councilmember Gordon. So when it says designee, will that be an actual person or are we just going to say the operator at 311? Uh, Chair Goodman, Councilmember Gordon, thank you so much. Um, in terms of designee, that could actually be anybody. So it could be 311. We could assign it to a manager or supervisor or it could be an administrative staff, just depending upon who, um, excuse me, depending upon what bill we are mailing out. We just want to make sure that they get the, the service that they need. So it doesn't have to be a person. It could just be 311. Um, Chair Goodman, Council Member Gordon, correct. And I'll assure you, I didn't love this idea initially. <laughs> I want people to get a call back as soon as possible. And I think having a licensing person is what they deserve. But I've been convinced that the licensing people don't have as much time to call them back. And so they're actually not getting as good of service when they have to go to the licensing inspector. And a lot of these calls are like, I just want to discontinue my rental license. Or I have a question about the fee that the license, mm -hmm. the license inspector doesn't need to answer themselves. Mm -hmm. And 311, you do get an actual person. So they'll have a script. I, I, Ms. Dowling will tell you I did not love this initially. Um, but I do I have been convinced it will provide better customer service, not less, which is why I said I'd bring it forward. Councilmember Gordon. I support the ordinance change. I don't it was very specific saying we had to have the inspector's contact information listed. It kind of made sense. It might have made more sense when the city was smaller. But I also really think it is useful for the inspector's name to be listed. Um, and that's even helpful if somebody contacts our offices about it, we know who to contact and kind of to reach out to, uh, although we can certainly go through the normal kind of chain of command to try to dig down and find out. But so, I mean, I'm planning on supporting it. It was a pretty simple change to the ordinance, mm -hmm. just adding two words. Um, and I think it's commonly done that somebody can designate somebody to mm -hmm. handle these things for them. So I think that's fine. But I thought I'd put in a plug for yeah. actually having the inspector's name is still useful and really can be also be really useful for a property owner to, to find out who should I really talk to so I can figure out exactly how to fix this the right way. Um, Chair Goodman, oh, I'm sorry, Chair Goodman, Councilmember Gordon. So this is just a change that we want to impose in terms of administrative citations. So it's for those ones that might result in a late billing. So it's not for those that focus on code enforcement. So if an inspector is issuing an order or citation because of a, the inspector or the owner has to put address numbers on a property, those citations would still have the inspector's name listed on it. This is just for those that relate to a bill for like a FCOM or a rent rental license bill. So. That's a very useful clarification. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Further questions? Thank you, Ms. Dowling, Thank for your uh, report. We This is a public hearing, uh, so we will open the is that correct, Irene? No. Um, so we're opening the public hearing on what is numbered as item number six, require changes and requirements for administrative citations ordinance. Is there anyone else here to speak to this issue? Anyone? Anyone? Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. Councilmember Gordon. I'll move approval. Thank you. <laughs> Councilmember Gordon has moved to approve item number six. Further comments or questions? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That item is approved. We are now adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>